All right, what's up there, YouTube? Okay, so uh, today, actually late last night, uh, Nikon, Nikon released a, the firmware update to the Z6 and Z7. So they've released another firmware update to improve these cameras. So uh, I've got the list of things here. I'll leave a link down in the description below to the firmware page in case you guys want to update it. So basically they've added Support for ProGrade and Lexar CF Express memory cards. Now the ProGrade, I was just, I had one, one of those in my cart, uh, 120 gig card in my cart on Amazon because I was gonna getting ready to buy one and I wanted to make sure that they were gonna have support for them before I did and sure enough, boom, right there, they added support. Custom setting audio, auto area AF slash face eye detection now offers an animal detection. So that, now they've added what Sony has, the animal eye detection, into their, into their camera. So now you have animal eye detection in the Z6 and Z7. That adds dogs and cats to the subjects supported by face and eye detection autofocus. As a result, the camera can now detect and focus on the faces of dogs and eyes of dogs and cats. Animal face detection, but not eye detection, is also, also available in movie mode. Animal face detection works in movie mode. So while you're in making videos, you can have it focus on an animal, like your pet. It will pick their pet's face and focus on the pet's face. That is pretty cool. Improved functionality sub of subject tracking AF. Available when auto area AF is selected for AF area mode. Subject tracking AF can now be initiated via the FN1 or FN2 buttons on the camera or FN1 or FN2 buttons on the lens. Subject track, so now they've added it where you can just click the button and it'll automatically start subject tracking. That's pretty cool. So it can be added to the buttons, which is what we needed. That's one of the big things. People were annoyed you had to go in and turn it on and then go back out of the menu. So this way you can just, apply, uh, you can assign it to a button, boom. Can also be assigned to the custom control setting F2, custom control assignment, then group F controls in the custom setting menu, or custom setting G2, custom setting G2, custom control assignment. The behavior of the camera when tracking is ended by pressing the AF on button or by pressing the shutter release button halfway. With AFC, continuous servo autofocus and subject tracking AF enabled in photo mode has been changed to more closely resemble that of the 3D tracking option from digital SLR. So they're basically saying, hey, look, we, what we did was we fixed this. We made it like the 3D tracking that you guys wanted. Everybody wanted the 3D tracking. Now they've made it more like the 3D tracking in the digital DSLRs. So you're getting Nikon. It seems to me like Nikon's listening to its users, listening to its base and saying this is what they want. Now, you could say, well, they, they weren't listening to its users based on the, on the release, release notes of the D6. Because we were like, well, what is that? It's got, it doesn't have, it's not shooting higher megapixels. It's not a, a combo mirrorless. Like I saw the, the new uh, Canon camera is pretty awesome. Uh, Fro, Big Fro Man made a video recently about how awesome the autofocus tracking is and stuff on it. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, maybe the, the D6 actually has much better autofocus tracking. I don't know, but, you know, it seems like that was a pretty, that was a pretty good move from Canon to do that. But um, anyway, back to the thing is you could say, well, Nikon's not listening to its users because look at the D6. We all wanted autofocus. We all wanted a combo mirrorless. We wanted 4K at 60. We wanted, you know, uh, uncompressed raw footage or whatever. We wanted all these different features in a camera and they didn't give us any of that. They gave us slightly better improved focusing, slightly faster shooting, and that's about it. And, and you know, that's about it. Some, some uh, wireless stuff built in which they could have added at any time and made it a D5S or whatever. You know, a, a, a newer version of the D5. Basically, it's a new version of the D5 anyway. So that's all it is. Same old sensor. And that was the big complaint. So, I don't know. We'll see. But it seems like they're listening when they, when they come out with stuff like this. Continuous service autofocus subject tracking AF enabled the photo mode has been changed to more closely resemble that of 3D tracking option for DSLR. 
That is awesome. Anyway, custom setting F2. In group F controls the custom setting metal. Now offers a lens FN2 button option, which can be used to choose the role played by the lens LFN2 button available on certain Z-mount lenses. So it's basically allowing you to custom controls can be now assigned to the lens. Added support for the focus limit switch on the available Z lenses is February 2020. Only the Nikkor 70-200 F2 VRS lens has that. So they've added support to the new for the new uh, 24 to 7 or 70 to 200. Optimized responsiveness responsiveness of the switch to manual focus when the focus or control ring on a Z mount lens is rotated during autofocus. The control ring only functions in this capacity when assigned the focus manual auto mode. All right, so they, they uh, optimized the response, made it more responsive when you change, when you automatically grab the lens, start changing it on certain Z mount lenses when it's in manual mode, but it's auto focusing. To go from auto focusing to manual focusing when you touch the ring, it jumps in faster to the thing. Well, that's nice. Fix the following issues. Oh, so they fixed some issues. Let's see. When the viewfinder brightness was adjusted manually, brightness would sometimes change when the stand standby timer was restarted. Okay. iOS devices OS 13 would sometimes display a Bluetooth pairing request when pairing was complete. Okay. And that's it. That's it. So I, I don't know. It seems like a pretty worthy. Uh, it seems like a pretty good. They, uh, they updated stuff. They fix stuff. I'm grabbing my coffee. It's morning time. They fix stuff. They made the camera better. They've supposedly improved the autofocus, the continuous autofocus face detection focus thing. I don't know what this is focusing like right now. My, uh, my camera, my phone's over here. I need to find a way to mount this where I can see it just off camera. That'd be perfect. Or I can do it like this. I need to get a little mini tripod and set this up right here. Anyway, or I could set it up somewhere. It'd be handy. Because I use the, see I use SnapBridge, like I said earlier, I use SnapBridge and uh, just set the camera to manual mode and then I use SnapBridge and, and to set up my recording so that I can I can see what I look like and frame myself without having to look. Uh, that was the other thing. All these uh, flippy screen guys, you know, complain, oh, well, we can't, we need a flippy screen, we need a flippy screen. I think it's actually better to have this, to, to use this, because I can have it right here, just off screen, and see what my framing looks like, and I don't have to look way over there to the camera. So I can use a longer lens and get this nice blurred background and nice compression, so you don't even need to have a super fast lens, right? Right now, this lens is at f2.2. This is the uh, f1.8 lens at f2.2. I raise it up to f2.2. It's still blurry back there. It's still blurry. I'm not, I'm only like a foot and a half from this background. It's not like it's way far back or highly compressed, but the camera's like 10 feet from me because I'm using the 85 millimeter, which is fine. Most people have at least 10 feet of space. You know, it's eight to 10 feet probably from me. And then a foot and a half to two feet from the background. If I move back, I go higher up in the frame and more gets in focus. Let's see. Yeah. Still, still looks fantastic. And I could actually just, I could stay back here and lower the, uh, change the ISO. Let me do that right now. I'm going to change the, I'm going to change the F stop to 1.8 and stay right here and see what this background does. It's, I'm like a foot from the background. So hold on. Okay. So now I'm at f1.8. I've dr I dropped the ISO down a little bit because I, ra I raised the, you know, I made it f1.8. And it's still about the same blurriness. It's not that much of a difference between now and the, and the very back background. Obviously, if I move in closer, the background gets a little bit more blurry, you know. But I, I, it's fine. I'm going to change it back to F. I like the F2.2 a little bit better. I think it's, it stays on focus a little bit better with F2.2, but this is, I've updated this camera to the newer firmware. So that's why I was thought, well, let me do a little quick video. I'll leave it F1.8. So I thought, let me do a little quick video and see, um, 
see how this, see if it seems to be tracking me a little bit better than it did in the last video that I did at f1.8 out in my yard with the, with the FD lens, with the, uh, out in my yard with the ND filter on the lens. So, I don't know. We'll see. I, what do you guys think? Does this thing look good? Are, are you excited that ca camera companies like uh, Nikon, especially Nikon, Nikon never, I mean, they, they're well known for abandoning, abandoning cameras, basically. You know, they, they come out with an update or two to fix some issues, and then that's it. You don't hear about another firmware update to add anything, ever. It's never happened. And ne they never add anything. Well, on these Z6 and Z7 cameras, they've added feature after feature after feature. They're up to, ver uh, they're up to um, version 3.0 now on the firmware. It started at 1.25 or something like that, or 1.0. It started at 1.0. Then it got to like 1.2, 1.25. Uh, you know, 1.8, whatever. It had there was like several, several up uh, updates. It went from 220 to three to three. It went from 220 to three, and it was just I just updated this firmware when I got the camera the other day. It was on 210, and I updated it to 220. So, you know, a week later, I'm updating it to three version three with supposedly more features added and better thing. And also, they added the ProRes RAW to it. They've really been doing a lot to update these Z cameras, these Z cameras, which I think is absolutely fan. I, I mean, who could ask for anything more? They're at, they're updating, they're keeping up with and making the cameras that we bought a year ago more relevant today. And hopefully, all this updating and the software technology they they figured out. Okay, well, we can add in animal eye detection. We can add in this other stuff. People want this, right? And they add these things in there. And then hopefully, because they've added these things in there, they can look back and go, okay, well, this we've got all these, let's, the new camera, let's do this, but let's add this. Let's make the focus tracking even better. Let's make it do this. Let's make it even faster, you know? And let's make it work at a longer distance. That was the complaint is they had to be closer to the camera before autofocus detection would come in on face detection. Uh, uh, they didn't add eye detection on video, I don't think. I don't see it going on my eye. On video but honestly I don't really need it on video for eye detection all I need is face detection on video the reason why is because the, the depth of field being that shallow that you know it's not like a photo where you're zooming in on a high-res image and I can see every little pixel and tell that the eye is out of focus in video as long as the face is in focus it's you know close enough to being in focus that's why it's a little bit funny when you um and even tony's video where he was talking about he didn't he shot in a 1080 and stuff where he was outside and had somebody mentioned that uh he was shooting with like this 1.8 lens but he walked up close to it and when he got close i was watching it yesterday i i turned it back on again and i was watching because i didn't i didn't really i watched about halfway through and then stopped because it was just seemed silly with him walking outside trying to show off that the camera can focus on them and stuff. I didn't, I didn't get it. This camera does that. But, um, so I turned it back on to see, you know, the rest of it. And I noticed that it was jumping like from his, his mustache, his, his, this area would be in focus and then it'd go back to his eyes and then it'd blur to his ear a little bit when he was talking and go back to his eye. It did jump around back and forth hunting for focus. So I don't know if, I don't think it's a, I auto detect. I think he's using the Canon for that. The Canon, which was only 1080p, that one, you know, with that type of autofocus in it. But it wasn't. It's not perfect at f1.8. It just jumps around a little bit. So maybe at this distance, it's better at f1.8. Like I'm eight feet away. But as you get closer, you know, it's it has a harder time jumping from one thing to the other because the depth of field gets even more shallow the closer you get to it. Obviously. So, I don't know. Anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. Let me know what you think. Are you excited about it? Also, if you're Nikon shooters and you update to this firmware, let us know in the comments below. I don't have I don't have a pet anymore. We got rid of our dog. So, I don't have any I don't have any pets or animals I can go out and shoot and test the uh, eye out of focus for animals. But if you do, let, let us know below, you know, shoot, shoot a comment in the below and let's talk about it. See how, let us know. Let me know what you guys, uh, experiences with this new, with this new software, this new firmware update. Let's, let's talk about it. 
All right, YouTube, I'm out. Thumbs up. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Talk to you later. Have a good day, YouTube.